next one here. All right, go ahead. If you if you got a couple of thoughts to start with, go ahead, and then we'll go to questions. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. You know, great lesson to learn. You can't be flushing um, paper towels down the um, down the toilet. That um, unfortunately got us some plumbing problems. And um, yeah, goodness gracious, great lesson. So I know. How do I? I long story. That all being said, um, but like I told you guys the other day, when you have a problem with the plumbing, you call the plumber. When you have a, when you have, when you ask about basketball, you call the coach. When you ask about anything else, so uh, that's my um, two cents on that. Um, regarding uh, Tuesday, you know, obviously I said my piece after the game, and um, was. Uh, you know, I, you know, I said what I said about, you know, our standard and, and, and who we've been and who we are defensively. That's first and foremost. If you look at the stats defensively in the ACC this year, you know, we're, I think we're fifth right now in ACC play and defensive efficiency. We're second in points off of turnovers, second in creating turnovers. I think we're top five in, um, in, um, what do you call it in a three point defense and whatever it may be. So, you know, but we're, on the other hand, we're, we're near the bottom or dead last in offensive efficiency. And that's been our issue. And that's what I was upset with on third on Tuesday was our defense the first half, because look, we've had issues scoring, we've had droughts, but one thing that we've been really good is defensively. And we just weren't that the first half credit North Carolina state, but um um, uh, but you know, like you look at the last two years, we were really good offensively and really good defensively. And that's why we finished in the upper tier, you know, to win in the ACC, you got to be good at both and to be, if you want to be at the upper level. And that's what we did the last two years this year, you know, offensively, we're just not getting it done right now. Um, and, um, but we, what we've been consistent in my entire time has been the defense and that's why I was disappointed in the in the first half on in the uh, game on Tuesday. But I said my piece on that on Tuesday. So we shift our attention to th to tomorrow to Pittsburgh. Uh, what I would tell you is I think Jeff Capel should be in consideration for Coach of the Year in the ACC. Um, I think he's done a great job. Um, they've had some injuries. You know, they've had some things where you know Horton hasn't been able to play the entire season. I think for uh, Coach Capel to keep them together like they've done and they play hard, you know, they're, they're really good. I, I, I think his, he should be in consideration for ACC Coach of the Year. I think he's done one heck of a job. And, and he really, they should have beat Virginia at Virginia. They should have beat Notre Dame at home. I mean, they could have had a couple extra more wins that the ball just didn't bounce their way at the last second. Um, and, um, and, you know, he's kept the team together. And so you got to give coach Capel a lot of credit and his staff and there'd be no doubt in my mind, uh, that he should be highly considered for ACC coach of the year. Okay. We'll go to questions and uh, start with Kelly Quinlan, Kelly. Josh, um, you know, with, with the offensive issues, is, is there really much you can do at this point in the year? I mean, You've gone away from some of the Princeton stuff at times, but just it seems like there's not really a, a great answer there because of the lack of interior scoring. Just what can you do? Do you go with more motion? Do you try some different things or you just kind of roll with what you got? Well, Kelly, let me just say this. Um, you know, a couple things. One is um, you're, you're, you're right about we don't have a lot of time to make adjustments, if that makes sense. Just on the fact alone, um, you know, not able to make some adjustments because you're, you've put everything in at this point of the year. So, you know, you're, you're not going to, um, uh, you know, you kind of, you're, you're, you have your bulk of your thing. However, we, you know, we're going to continue to adjust and tweak to the best of our ability to give us our best chance to, to be better offensively. Can there be wholesale changes and you're putting an entire new offense at this point? I think 
to what I was saying. And to your point, I think that's hard to do, but you can make adjustments. Do you call more set plays? Do you do some different things? You're right. We've done, we've gone away a little bit here and there from the Princeton, but let me just say this last game, Rodney Howard had a double, double the game before versus uh, Virginia. I thought Rodney Howard was pretty good. So hopefully he continues on that trajectory of, of improving and getting better. And, and, you know, guys, he was good early to start the season. And then that injury just, you know, he, he was out for a while. So, um, you know, we haven't had as much interior scoring this year uh, where, where we're throwing it at the block. That has been an issue. There's no question about that. Um, but, um, but, but the good news is a guy like Rodney Howard is you can see him getting better. He's getting more confident. And I'm happy about these last two games. Uh, we need to continue to bring along Jordan Mecca and Saba. And um, Kelly, we're going to have to make some shots, you know, offensively. And that's why I've said guys like DeVoe and Usher, you know, they've got to be really good for us and highly efficient. It can't be a lot of points on a, on a high number of shots. They've got to be very efficient. And that's where Kelly finding that third score, you know, is important. And we just got to keep, tweaking and adjust and all those things that we can do to give us our best chance to try to score and be better offensively. Next to Rod McKenzie and then to Ken. Go ahead, Rod. Hey, Josh, after the last game, you talked a little bit about slow starts and trying to find solutions there. Is it as simple as maybe just looking at making some changes in the starting lineup? Well, I don't know if it's just as simple as that, but I think everything's on the table, Rod, because our start since the Florida State game have not been good, including the Florida State game. We just haven't started well. Now, we've always battled back and fought back, and but we've dug ourselves in a hole, and you dig yourselves in a hole like that, that's not good. Now, previously, before the Florida State game, we were starting great, but not finishing well. So that's why I keep saying we got to put both halves together. Um, but I think everything's on the table, whatever we got to do to start better or to give us our best chance to win, not just the start of the game, the middle of the game, the start of the second half, um, you know, at any point during the course of the game, whatever we've got to do to give ourselves a, the best chance to, to win. I mean, that's the only objective. So I think at this point, everything's on the table, whether we do anything or not, I don't know, but I don't think. You know, I don't think you can take anything off the table because we do need to start better because, you know, at this point, we've got to have better starts when you're in this league, you know, getting yourself behind, especially based on our scoring concerns. Um, you know, that just really puts so much pressure on your defense. You almost have to pitch a shutout. And obviously that's not always going to happen. And Segura, go ahead. Um, Josh, Michael was saying before you got on about how uh, you had had a conversation with him about playing with better energy and, you know, actually referring to the last game and also, you know, looking at the, the last few games as a chance to kind of imprint his legacy. And I'm curious kind of what, if you could explain kind of your side of what you saw and just the, the kind of how the conversation went, went with him. Yeah, I mean, Michael, Michael's a phenomenal young man. Um, uh, he, he, he really gets it. He understands. I mean, look, he's, this is his fourth year here. I think he's at, uh, and Moose can, Moose can correct me, but he's at 1595 total points, 15th in the history of Georgia tech scoring list. Obviously didn't get to play a full season last year. You know, he's to get to the top 10, he's got to get to 1736, which is not out of the question. And, and that's with a shortened season last year. So, I mean, he's had a, He's had a tremendous career here, MVP of the ACC tournament and, um, and um, you know, on track to graduate this summer and uh, has helped us win a lot of games. And so, uh, and he's been a, you know, a phenomenal, you know, representative of Georgia Tech. Uh, but that all being said, this last stretch, as I remind them, is, is going to be critical for our team to see, can we move up the standings and for two, for people to, to remember him. I mean, because this is going to be his last impression for, for as he leaves, you know, uh, you know, at Georgia tech in this stretch run. So there, even though there's not a lot of games left, Ken, there is a lot of games. And, and so it's, it, but, but Mike understands and I, and he, and he understood, I mean, we, we need Michael. I mean, we need his energy. 
we need we need him to be just you know playing and he doesn't have to be a rah-rah guy Ken it doesn't have to be just screaming and yelling it's it's his energy by his actions and that starts from the defensive end and when he's really engaged and playing with his hair on fire um, you know I just think it makes everyone on our team better and it also makes him better offensively Kelly Quinlan Kelly go ahead you know, as you, you talk about that, it seems like maybe the piece that's also missing this year is you, you don't have a guy like Jose that is such a natural leader and can rally guys and, and be that that guy that's so hard-nosed that takes over the game when, when things are going wrong. Is that accurate, sort of kind of both offensively and defensively and, and just as a team thing? You just don't have that personality on this team right now. Well, Kelly, you know, part of it is, is um, you know, obviously leadership is important, um, very important. Um, but to be a great leader, first, you got to lead yourself. You got to be able to lead yourself. But secondly, more than just leadership, it's also about being a great teammate. And um, and so, look, we have we have tremendous young men on our team and uh, we have great guys um, and we have high character young men. Uh, but, but, you know, leadership, just leadership or being a great teammate, that doesn't, you know, when I, because being a leader is, is being a great, great teammate, being a great teammate, it's not just being a, a, a pat on the back, you know, that doesn't mean just being a great teammate, being a great teammate is being a leader as well, and that's leading yourself and leading others, and Jose was just naturally gifted at, at that, because of that intensity that he bought, that he brought, and he brought it every day, but it didn't happen overnight, Kelly. It also took him some time to to understand how he had to practice. There was many times his first two years here in practice that he and I really butted heads because he was not leading at the at the level that he needed to lead at, and that starts in practice, not just in the games. And uh, it took him some time. And for and so for a guy like Devo and Usher, these are the Khalid Moore. These are new roles for those guys because we've had Jose. Moses, but mostly Jose really leading the team in that area. And, um, and so now it puts on to these guys where it's okay. It's really, really important. And they're tremendous young men. And, and I was, I don't always tell Jose, I said, Jose, being a leader is being a great teammate. And people think, cause we have great teammates. That's, it's not just a pat on the back and being positive, being a great teammate is is leading in practice by your actions, by the intensity that you compete in practice, even, even when it's something of a, just another everyday drill and you feel bored with it, but you've got to be a great teammate or a leader. You've got to set the tone by, man, I don't care how boring this is. I am going to have such intensity and, and be so good at the fundamentals and set the tone that it sets the page for everybody else. And so, that's a learning process. It doesn't happen overnight. And, and it didn't happen overnight for Jose. And it's part of learning for continue the continuation of the learning of Michael DeVoe and Jordan Usher and those guys to continue to get better at that. And um, I'm, I think they're, they have an understanding of what they need to do moving forward, especially in this last stretch. If we want to get ourselves out of the, out of the basement, and uh, we're going to need them to be great teammates, great leaders. And again, great team, great teammates isn't about being a great guy. I, I, I put great teammates and leadership together because being a great teammate is you've got to be a great leader, even if that's meaning leading yourself. And that's just, and it's not, not everyone. It doesn't just happen by the snap of your fingers. It takes time. It's a work in progress. These are young men and they're all growing. And, um, um, and there's, and they've had continued growth. And there's been some time, Kelly, that look, the ball hasn't bounced our way this year a lot. You know, the, just I've said it, the ball and the whistle really hasn't gone our way. And it's just sometimes you got to get a little lucky with that and you got to stay healthy. And those things have also been a contributing factor of, of where we are at this point. Rod McKenzie, Rod, go ahead. Gosh, going back to Rodney Howard, it, it seemed like last game he was, you could tell that maybe he's recovered from that ankle injury, more mobile, a lot of pick and rolls, getting off his feet for putbacks. Uh, and how is he also progressing with the zone defense? 
Well, he, he, I think he's feeling the most healthy he's been since the ankle, since the uh, foot injury. So, and you can see him get back in conditioning and, 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 and hope, and that's a good sign because for, for us, for, um, you know, for our stretch run here, we're going to need Rodney to be good for us. I mean, we, we need that presence inside both offensively and defensively. And uh, he's given us these back-to-back games, you know, have been good. And, and um, he's done a really nice job. And, and I think there's a lot to build on, you know, um, from that. So, and he's got to keep getting better, even within the zone, whether we're zone or man, um, you know, he just has to keep, keep get better and, and not only him, but everybody else as well. Okay. Ken, if you got one more, we'll do it. Otherwise we'll wrap it up. You got one. Um, it, was, it was really short actually. What Go day ahead. did you talk with Michael? Well, I've talked to Michael. Yeah, you ever talk every day? Like what did you have the meeting? I guess maybe more. Well, but I mean, I've talked to him a bunch, but you know, obviously we talked after the game after Thursday's uh, game. Okay. Like right after the game. You mean? The, Not right after the game, the, 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 the following day. Uh, okay. Right, yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Hey, 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 hey yep. guys. For a Thanks, quick, Josh. Yeah, just a quick reminder. Um, yeah, don't put a diaper down the toilet. Don't put a paper towel down the toilet. Don't put a baby wipe down the toilet. There's a lot of things to not put down the toilet. <laughs> and it just shows you at 44, I'm still learning every single day in life. Just to, Just to let you guys know that. Thank you, Coach. Hey, hey Ken. Yes. Maybe I maybe that's a time to do the maybe that's a great opportunity to do a PSA. You know, no diapers, <laughs> paper towels, and no baby wipes down the toilet. All right. You got